Hello and welcome back to Misrepresented. I'm your host, Lisa Opie. And before we introduce our guest, I do have to thank Pink Apple Dresses for addressing both of us for this episode today. And now I'm super excited because today we have Heather Marie Thompson in the studio, who is a former Miss Grand US Virgin Islands and just like a pageant icon i feel like oh thank you <laughs> i don't feel like that but i'm trying to get there oh my gosh. no i'm totally like a fangirl because i watched like miss grand like behind the scenes like everything on grand tv and like i saw you in the room with yeah. noah and miss peru oh my gosh i States. know yeah so i want to start at the very beginning of pageants i think it's a good place to start yeah so how did you get into everything? so i started in 2017 was actually my first ever pageant was miss wow. new york usa 2017 wow and i got started kind of on a whim my college roommate who was supposed to be my college roommate i should say i didn't end up going to maryland for school but this girl was supposed to be my roommate and she ended up signing up for Miss Maryland USA okay. posting all about it. I was like, what's, what's this all about? So I looked into it more and then one of the ads popped up on my Facebook or Instagram and mm-hmm. I was like, you know what, I'm going to apply yeah. and see where this goes. So I applied, they called me, did the interview and wow. I kind of just went for it. had no training, had no background information. Didn't know what I was getting myself into, but here we are seven years later, wow. still still going hard <laughs> at pageants. I got bit by the bug and I'm still going. <laughs> so you started at Miss New York USA as your first pageant, because I feel like that's one of the most competitive pageants in the world. They get hundreds of girls, yeah, right? My, Were you shocked? My first year, there was over 180 girls competing for Miss Alone. Oh my I was, gosh. I'm at the end of the alphabet, so I was number like 158. Wow. So I, were the judges even awake by the time? you walked probably not honestly (laughs) and I probably didn't help I probably put them to sleep even more because I had no idea what I was doing I like my arms were flailing around I was just trying to get on and off the stage without falling honestly yeah yeah. You know, it's kind of like that, like, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Literally. And that kind of takes me to Miss Grand, where we see Miss Columbia doing, like, a twirl down the stairs. Oh, my gosh. Swimsuit. Maria, she's yeah, insane. She's amazing. Crazy. She's a performer, let me tell oh, you. She was, she was, like, perfect for yeah. Grand. So tell me about, like, what led you from New York, USA to Miss Grand. So there's a whole lot that happened between that. I competed for Miss New York USA four times. Wow. My re- most recent time, 2021, I actually placed top 20, and I was so happy. I That's was like, huge. That That's was a really like, big deal. Yeah, that was like my goal going into it. And by then, I had competed in a couple other systems. I competed in Super National United States. Ooh, that's the few- model one, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. They've changed their like mission behind the scenes a couple of times like it used to have I don't know their slogan has changed a little bit but they're always looking for that girl next door who's kind of like a modely girl (laughs) and then I ended up meeting Brian Javier at Miss Supernational USA the last time I competed last summer and I placed first runner up so I didn't win didn't end up going internationally but he reached out to me so I competed for Grand International as U.S. Virgin Islands. And it was an insane, amazing, incredible experience. Like I still to this day can't believe I actually went to Vietnam and I was there for a whole month competing. Like, Oh my gosh. I want to hear all about it because I feel like Grand is so up and coming and I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of our audience is on the road to Miss Grand, but not Mm -hmm. a lot of people have actually been. So tell me about that entire experience. The entire thing from from start start to to finish. finish. Yeah, like imagine (laughs) if like you're going into it, like what would you want to know? Oh my gosh, so much. Like, I don't even know where to start, honestly. <laughs> There's so much to it. So what are the areas of competition? Like, what's actually so judged? it's very similar to, like, most pageants. Girls in the U.S., I feel like most well know the USA system. It's mm-hmm. very similar in that aspect where you have interview, um, swimsuit, yeah. evening gown. And then they also have the top 10 question, which is usually based around like stopping the war and violence. So this past year, they asked about the conflict in um, Gaza and Israel. And they also have a top five question like usual. So our year was a little interesting. I don't know how many people have watched, but we had to do our swimsuit competition technically three times. The first time was in the rain, and Nawat basically had told us that we could take our shoes off. By the time a few girls had already fallen, he had come backstage and was like, not backstage, but into the room with us and was like, girls, like, 
It's very slippery because it was outside and it was raining and it did not let up. Um, he was like, you guys can take your shoes off. I don't think one girl ended up taking their shoes off. Like it's Miss Grand. You can't take your shoes off. Once the first <laughs> couple girls go and fall and you got to kind of like, just go with it. I feel yeah. like, cause then Mr. Nawat's going to see, oh, you're one of the girls who took your shoes off. Like that's what we're mm-hmm. all thinking in our head. And he, I'm going to be honest, like he was insistent that we could take our shoes off and wow. I just wouldn't. Even though, like, I slipped a few times, oh I just, gosh. I wouldn't do it because, I don't know, you're at Grand. Like, you've got <laughs> you've to roll with the punches. Yeah. <laughs> so then he ended up doing, like, a redo of our swimsuit competition, and that's, like, what counted. Okay. And then... So you risk your life for no reason. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I mean, but the judges are still there. Mr. Knott's still watching yeah, you. So he's true. seeing how you handle yeah. it, how you handle the situation. And that's one thing about Grand is they're very open that they are taking everything into consideration throughout the whole entire competition. So yeah. you don't want to be the girl who is, like, being difficult or won't roll with the punches. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't realize this, honestly, but then you end up competing swimsuit again during prelims. So you technically compete twice in swimsuit and it's all taken into account. I feel like the first swimsuit competition is more of like a fashion show Mm -hmm. and it's just for like the audience to get pumped up. up. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but they keep it in consideration, like I said. Mm -hmm. And then... Yeah, we did it again at prelims, and I wasn't wow. expecting that. I thought, honestly, we were just doing evening gown, and I was like, I got to compete in swimsuit again. <laughs> like, but I already honestly, ate. <laughs> No, but honestly, no, I kept losing weight and losing weight oh. being in Asia. <laughs> um, but honestly, I felt like I did the best performance during prelims anyways, so I was oh, happy good. about it. Yeah. And what about interviews? So I saw, like, was the group interview that they broadcasted, is that, like, the actual interview yeah. that was judged? Yeah. That's the real interview. That was. That is so stressful. We weren't expecting that. So they told us like that day that that's what was happening. It's like a bloodbath because you're kind of fighting for time, for words. And then they brought in just specific girls into like a behind the scenes interview. Oh, really? What happened back there? Well, it just seemed like I've talked to a lot of girls after they ended up showing it. Mm -hmm. They were saying it was like behind the scenes, like nobody's going to see the what they're talking about but they kind of showed it anyways and um not much they didn't ask like anything really specific I think Nawat just wanted to see how girls handled it Wow! and every girl that was taken into the room was ended up in the top 20 so whoa (laughs) so I feel like at that point I was just like whatever happens happens Mm -hmm. obviously there are already girls that are like girls they're focused on that they want in the top 20 or they want to see if they crumble under pressure um and from there I just you know just kept swimming (laughs) just keep swimming (laughs) (laughs) is there anything else from your experience in Vietnam that stood out to you um I mean always friendships that you make stand out who were you like your besties like what countries (laughs) so United Kingdom Chloe her and I were like attached at the hip the entire time and then also Puerto Rico was one of my really good friends Christina also Venezuela I made friends with a lot of the girls a lot of them Japan yeah Japan's so sweet yeah Yoi was adorable and so sweet Lei Lei was Miss Vietnam and she was so kind like it was her home country so she really made an effort to make us all feel at home and she helped me book my nails right before queen uh, right before finals I was like I need my nails redone they were all falling apart after four weeks so I was like yeah was there like a crazy like language barrier like was it hard getting around um not really because we were with the team the entire Mm -hmm. time and most of the team spoke English and well, they had the Vietnamese team and the Thai team. So okay. usually they spoke English and Vietnamese or English and Thai. So wow. a couple of the girls didn't speak English very well. And there were a lot of girls that spoke Spanish. So sometimes I was like not able to oh be in the gosh. conversation. And some of my best friends there were Spanish speakers. So they mm-hmm. turned to me, speak Spanish. And then <laughs> I just give them a look like, but you look like a Latina queen when you're in that's, fashion mode. That's yeah. what the, and I trained with a lot of Latino, Latina yeah. people. And so I was friends with them as well. So I feel like they just felt like when they're when you're exhausted too, I'm sure your mind just switches. Oops. Yeah. Your mind just switches to your 
like first language yeah. so I would just give them a look like and they're like oh right 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 English I'm oh like <laughs> I'm like English por favor please English <laughs> wow and so how is like um the actual like U.S. Virgin Islands pageant I was there um, there were a lot of surprises, right? Yes. Were there also surprises at Grand National? I feel like there was with, like, the facts. Yeah, so, interview. like I said, with the interview, yeah. that was a surprise. And Grand is definitely not very conventional in ways. Like, Mr. Noir is very particular, and he likes crazy things. Mm-hmm. He loves the show. Yeah. So, I think with Grand U.S. Virgin Islands being a little over the top, I'm sure – it fits right in. You I was know? living, honestly, because I'm like over the top and like super extra. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, like super I can glam. do like 10 out of the 10 glam, you mm-hmm. know, because a lot of girls are going more natural. But I was like, this yeah. is my element. No, grand is so glam. It's like borderline like drag, I feel like. It's like yeah. the drag race. No, absolutely. <laughs> like the catwalk. Yeah, energy. absolutely. It's I over love the it. top. <laughs> it's over the top. And I love it. Wow. Because your inner like queen just comes out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now I want to talk about what's next for you because I know you have, like, a really big (laughs) announcement that you want to share with us. I'll let you say it. Yes, so I am going to be competing for Miss New York USA 2024. It'll be my fifth time back, and I'm hopefully going to come for the crown. It's That's the goal. That's always been the goal, but now more than ever, I feel like I'm ready, and I've had the experience internationally, Mm -hmm. and I really know what it takes to be a queen and to be – a state title holder, a national title holder. So I'm very excited yes. about that. Back to my roots, back to where I started. I love it. It's like a full circle mm-hmm. moment. So what do you think you're going to do differently at New York USA this year? So I think I've just had such a great team preparing me for Miss Grand International that I'm also working with for Miss New York USA. I'm going to work with Benjamin Diaz again as my walking coach. And yes. he really like helped me so much like Mm -hmm. you guys if you saw the video of me (laughs) walking (laughs) in 2019 one of the last times I competed at New York I it was just like I don't know it was so bouncy like the shortest little steps like I was just like bouncing along (laughs) and now like if you watched me at Miss Grand International it's just changed so much and he's gonna help me even more with Wow. poses and just feeling ready so that I'm not in my head because that's something I do a lot is I get on, in my head on stage I'm like what's next what pose am I doing yeah like what turn am I doing so especially when the pressure is on oh my god yeah having the practice helps do you feel like it all comes down to practice like by the time you get on stage is it just like muscle memory yeah yeah I do I feel like the way to look most natural and feel most natural and look like you're having a good time which I feel like the judges want to see that Mm-hmm. that's practice makes perfect I mean not perfect but it makes like you to not be in your head not thinking yeah. about what's happening because they can tell oh for sure when you're in your head and when you're like okay what's next like if you don't have the right gown for mm-hmm. example you know like it shows because you're not confident in it exactly. like you could wear a trash bag but if you're confident and you can exactly. still win the whole thing exactly so it's exactly. all about the energy mm-hmm. I feel like um, so I was looking at my talking points and you said that you got hit by a truck. Yes. <laughs> Why are we laughing? <laughs> because I don't know. Everybody laughs. I'm absolutely shocked. I'm like that. How does that happen? So in 2019, it happened. Actually, I was just walking across the street, going out to dinner. I was in Saratoga Springs, New York, just, you know, a Friday night, a Saturday night. I don't remember. I remember the date, but I don't know what day of the week it was. Um, September 21st, 2019, I was walking across the crosswalk like I'm supposed to. And this guy was in a truck, like a lifted Ram, Dodge Ram truck. And he stopped at the one stop sign coming out of the parking garage, flew to the next stop sign. But like he was stop signs away from me. So like I was You know, there was nobody at the intersection. And I'm walking across the street like I'm supposed to look both ways. And he just comes flying through the stop sign. And I went, like, I got hit and I went flying. Yeah. So somehow, by grace of God, I did not break anything. What? I didn't hit my head. I was a cheerleader for 10 years. So I feel like that really helped me learn how to fall. Oh, my God. So, and then I also had a massage that same day. You know how they say, like, if oh, yeah, your, you're, like, like soft muscles up. are, mm-hmm. yeah. So I just feel like that's what it was that I just, like, oh I went to the hospital. Gosh. They did a couple x-rays on me, and 
they were like, here's some ibuprofen, go home. <laughs> You're joking. No, I'm not joking. But it definitely did. Oh, my God. Did make my anxiety and it higher. I heightened it. And then yeah. also PTSD was... Like, you probably can't cross the street normally anymore. No, I can. And that's something I'm fine really with scary. now. But for a few years after, it was really scary. And it's the weirdest thing. When I was driving, like recently after it happened like I would be driving and I felt like I would see somebody at the side of the road like going across Mm -hmm. the road like I think that was the PTSD Mm -hmm. talking and was like so it was it was scary and it it took a toll on my mental health like if I heard revving of an engine because that's what happened before I got hit it really like would freak me out but after years now I'm I'm much better, but it was it was really tough. It was yeah, that it was is scary. Like definitely a very traumatic event. Like, do you remember like waking up on the floor? Or, no, like, yeah. You... So it was definitely like a blackout type of thing, yeah. and I was in the middle of the street. One of my shoes flew off. Oh. Like, like I was so planted on the ground. Mm-hmm. Fight or flight happened, and I was, I guess, fighting a truck. I thought I could fight oh, the truck, my gosh. but so my shoe like came off my foot. But I remember I just got up and I ran to the side of the road because I was, I was like yeah, so scared. Did the yeah. truck driver stop? Like yes, he did. Okay. He did. He stopped. He called nine one one. The ambulance God. came. The people that were driving the ambulance were so in shock that like I was okay because. Yeah, they've experienced it before and yeah and people don't just walk away from it so it was crazy somebody must have been watching over me a hundred percent it was absolutely insane I can't believe it happened to this day honestly gosh well that's like a fun topic to bring up in your interview (laughs) yeah it is it gets the conversation going you know yeah (laughs) Um, so I know like mental health is like really big in pageantry right now. I think Mm -hmm. it's something that we should talk about. So tell me about your mental health journey. So I have always struggled with anxiety. I think it comes from the fact that my mom has anxiety. I also have bipolar disorder in my family, depression, ADHD, and I kind of encompass all of them a little bit. I feel like, but anxiety is what I struggle with the most. Mm -hmm. And it's caused my stomach issues. You know, pretty girls always have stomach issues. (laughs) But people with, like, mental health problems Mm -hmm. and mental illness also can struggle with, like, IBS because of it. And that's kind of how I figured out finally that I was struggling with anxiety. I went to college for health sciences, and I was in Del... um, what was the class? I was in a psychology class and we were learning about mental illnesses. And I was like, wait, this is like all adding up. (gasps) Oh my God. And so I'm like 20 years old at this point, my whole life as a kid, I had stomach problems. I would go to the nurse as a kid. The nurse was like, you're fine. I went to the doctor. The doctor was like, you're fine. And I knew I wasn't fine. Like I knew there was something wrong. There were times I had to skip class because I was so unwell that I had to spend hours in the bathroom. Like, I was not okay. And this is from anxiety? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anxiety. And then also, as I told you earlier, I found out that I have allergies to dairy and also hazelnuts. And you would think as a doctor who had my mother as a patient as well would Mm -hmm. probably know family history. There's anxiety in my family. And then also that I have stomach issues, you would think maybe... I would go to an allergist or have allergy testing done. That never happened. So this past year, I started advocating for my own health, like physical health, and I got Mm -hmm. allergy testing done. I figured out that I need to not have dairy, not have hazelnuts (laughs) at all, because that makes it worse. And then also my mental health, if I'm not on my medication, I can definitely tell that my stomach isn't well. And then like my emotions are very heightened Mm -hmm. and it's hard to just go through everyday life like that to be somebody who's overthinking everything you can't fall asleep as well you're it's it's just crazy how much medication has done for me and so I'm a huge advocate for people to be medicated if they feel like it's going to make them better but obviously you have to find the right medication because there's a lot of side effects if you're not on the right Mm -hmm. medication so advocate for your own physical health and mental health. I think it's very important. 
I love that. Like when I was doing your hair and makeup, we were talking about we were well, chatting about well, everything. 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 And I'm like, I'm super ADD, and I'm like, I should probably go get medicated. <laughs> but you know what? It helps the podcast just move along. It you know, does. From topic to topic. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like some people can be neurodivergent, and it helps yeah. them through life. Like my yeah. past boss, she's like hops from thing to thing to thing. But being an entrepreneur, I feel like it can help. You have to. But I feel like you have to have a good team behind you that keeps you organized and on yeah. task yep. so that it doesn't it doesn't create, like, a difficulty in your business. Mm-hmm. But having that, like, Crazy mindset. Crazy idea. And it's almost yeah. like you're, you're not afraid. Like, there's no emotions of fear. No. So, like, Elon Musk, you know, like, he's obviously not, like, announced that he's neurodivergent, but, you know, there's signs. Yeah. There are signs. Yeah. And he's I, just, like, going for it. Like, the founder of PayPal, like, Tesla, and now he's, like, SpaceX. And I'm like, you know, you have to be a little bit weird. You have to have, <laughs> like, so many different things going on in your mind at uh, once yeah. to be able to do all these different yep. things. And then he just has the money to hire a team to make it happen Exactly. For like, my past boss, Paula McCormick, she's actually one of my sponsors. She always Ooh. sponsors me, and I help her from time to time. What's your business? She's an interior designer. Oh, how fun. Yeah. Oh, my God. So I worked with her for two years, and she's actually a past Ford model as well. Queen. She's, like, she's everything. She's, like, a blonde Barbie to this day, oh and she is just all over the place, but her business is booming because she just has such a creative – flow to her because Mm -hmm. she just knows what she wants she can see it but I don't know she just has all these different ideas all at once and she just (laughs) goes and goes and goes and I was like her girl that was like okay typing everything down okay let's do invoices let's like make sure everything's nice and organized (laughs) so do you feel like your life has drastically changed after going on medication yes absolutely I used to not be able to fall asleep I struggled with just like I said, overthinking so much. And that was really hard for me, especially in high school, middle school, when you're trying to create friendships oh, and yeah. you're overthinking every little thing and you feel like you have to be somebody you're not because yeah. that's what's accepted. So I think going on medication has helped me in my friendships, mm-hmm. helped me in my relationships, helped me just in general. I love that. So do you have any advice for women in pageants or people that are under like really high pressure situations in the public eye? Like, for example, Miss USA, like what do you think would like help them have an easier reign? So I think just putting your mental health in the forefront Mm -hmm. and it doesn't just have to be medication that helps you. It could be going to yoga, working out, working out is very good for you. Meditation, journaling. um, There's so many different ways you can put your uh, mind and energy in the best place. And that's what I really feel like you have to do. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So do you think, I feel like in the olden days, (laughs) olden days, (laughs) mental health was like completely ignored, right? It's like you're either like you either have it or you don't, you're either cut out for it or Mm -hmm. like the next person is going to get it together and step into that role. So like, Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about like that approach? I feel like, even the olden days is even <laughs> like six years it was ago, five six, years yeah, ago, two years, years ago, years like now, yeah. before COVID. I feel like mm-hmm. COVID now has really shown people that didn't even struggle with mental illness beforehand, like how difficult it can be to feel alone. Yeah. Cause that's how you feel. I feel, I feel like that's how I feel at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think that it, a huge light has been shown on that in the past yeah. few years. A lot of people are talking about it now. Part of me is like, is having mental health awareness, mental illness awareness kind of overdone as my platform, but it's just so near and dear to me. And mm-hmm. I think it's good that it's overdone. I feel like it's good that so many people are talking about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so back to your career, yes. you're working in construction right now, yes. right? And you want to go into real estate? Yes. Tell me more about that. So having a past with the interior designer is really helpful. Mm-hmm. Currently, I'm actually working as an assistant project manager for a plumbing company. Oh, awesome. That kind of just happened on a whim. Um, after I came home from Grand, I didn't have any money. And I was like, I need to get a career. I need to get a job, mm-hmm. a nine to five, something stable. I didn't have health insurance because oh I'm gosh. 27 now yeah. and not on my parents anymore. Oh, no. So uh, my boyfriend is a foreman for a plumbing company and I they were looking for an office manager. So I just interviewed 
and I had a little bit of a background in construction with working with an interior designer. Mm -hmm. And also, like I said, I was helping her manage her business. Mm -hmm. I was her assistant, personal assistant, business assistant, everything. Yeah. So more recently, I have become an assistant project manager for the company. Awesome. Which is crazy because I've been with this company six months. They already oh, wow. given me a raise. Oh, and I feel like, thank you. I just feel like <laughs> it's so weird. I never expected to work in the plumbing industry right. ever <laughs> like literally like ever grand to plumbing but no you're doing real. the cute stuff like you're sitting pretty in the office <laughs> yeah, no, for, real. for real but I just I don't know it's really kind of given me a sense of purpose I feel like it's it's shown me how smart I am mm -hmm. which is something that I didn't really believe when I was younger even though honestly my dad and my stepmom always made it a point to say you're beautiful, but smart too. They would always put, but smart too at the end of it. Yeah. But I had an older brother who just was like, not a genius, but like he just like stuff just oh, came to his mind so yeah. easily. And I had to work at it really hard. But and he probably kind of set the bar. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. yeah, he just was naturally very smart and school came to him easily, but I had to work at it very hard, but I had that work ethic where I would work at it very hard. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this position has really just shown me my worth in a lot of ways when I didn't expect it to. And it's been a blessing in disguise. And I guess I'm following in my dad's footsteps a little oh, bit. He was it. a project manager when I was younger. So wow. I guess it was meant to be a little bit, but like you said, I want to be in real estate and I would love to sell luxury properties and have yes. my own business one day. Love it. So that's in the works. I'm working on getting that license and I love taking it. the classes, doing everything I have to do. I mean, I feel like you could go into like real estate development because now you have that construction background as well and the management background yeah. and you just do all of it. I just honestly am one of those people who would love to be just a little bit of everything like I feel like I could be good <laughs> at doing makeup I feel like I could be good literally, at doing you hair you probably could because I you literally, have pageant background yeah it's true but the I perks of being ADD. it is <laughs> like we can apparently I'm ADD yeah. maybe self-diagnosing a little bit but it's okay <laughs> I dyed my own hair yesterday you did so. great by the Thank way you. this is like the expensive brunette that's like unachievable but she did it <laughs> last by night. myself somehow the cabinets are not okay <laughs> oh my gosh don't tell my boyfriend <laughs> no Oops, sorry. He'll find out by the time this episode goes. You're like, wait, what are these brown stains everywhere? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just so you don't know. It was the don't dog. Worry about the dog it. did it. The dog, the ghost dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, so speaking of animals and you know, doing all these things, like you have an ability to adapt like a chameleon. Yes. So tell me how that applies to your life. So, like I said, I feel like I just always am ready to go into the next thing. I and put in these situations and I just adapt to them so well. And I feel like that's so important as a queen to be able to be in any situation mm -hmm. and take something out of the situation or give something to somebody out of the situation. And competing at grand was very showing of that. I was very jet lagged. I was <laughs> exhausted from the preparation leading up to it. Yeah. I, but I just went in and did what I had to do. To... You figured it out. You I downloaded it out. She got Miss Peru's coffee, by the way, the Starbucks <laughs> that helped her win. <laughs> Luciana, you're welcome. Yeah. No, just kidding. She's amazing. Um, she paid me back every single time. Oh. Don't worry. She doesn't owe me a dime. <laughs> just the crown for that energy. <laughs> no, but so I just feel like I can go into any situation and make it a positive Mm -hmm. situation and make it work and I think that's important yeah. and I feel like I do it well it I think it helps that I had a little trauma in my life growing up that you just have to adapt to everything and make it work I love it I love yeah. it and look at you now future Miss New York future yes, Miss hopefully. USA hopefully. we're manifesting that for you manifesting <laughs> Um, okay, so before we wrap it up, I do want to do like a fun this or that. Yes, I love this part. Yay, me too. It's my favorite part of the show. Um, so the first one is going to be Reels or TikTok. Reels. I'm more of an Instagram girl. Really? I really just don't go on TikTok. Everybody will always make references to TikTok. They'll be like, you know that TikTok where? And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't know why. I just. Do you know who Pookie is? 
Yes, I do okay, know who Pookie know. is. I do, okay, but I feel like <laughs> you're doing good. I feel like I've seen that on Instagram. That was, I've seen their reels. I so. love her. <laughs> <laughs> I love her too. But yeah, I'm just an Instagram girl through and through. What about shopping online or in person? Oh, that's hard. I would say online just because I feel like they have more options, especially mm-hmm. for pageant girls. Like so I get true. all my pageant wardrobe online. But in person is nice because you can try things on. Yeah, like touching and feel mm-hmm, material. Mm-hmm. Um, we did both on you today, but hair or makeup? Oh, You can only pick one. Makeup. I would say I'd more so go out mm-hmm. with my makeup done than doing my hair. Yeah. Like I, I'd rather rock the natural hair and have glam, a little bit of glam on, then do my hair and have no makeup. My kind of girl, because same. I actually didn't do my hair. This is, like, leftover from it's Mexico. Okay. You look gorgeous, <laughs> as always. At least the lashes are on. Yes, we made it there. Platform heels or sandal heels? Platform. Same Z. I'm, I'm as bored. a pageant girl, you have to be. Like, How tall are you? Are you, can you announce it? Yeah, yeah. I'm 5'6". <laughs> okay. On a on my that's best like, that's day. Like, no, that's a good height. I'm probably my boyfriend's convinced I'm five seven, but I think okay. that's because he wants to feel like he's not as short. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I love you, babe. I'm sorry, but I really think I'm like five five and a half, five six. Oh, that's good. I'm yeah. five four, but on paper I'm like five six. Yeah, I'm like five eight. I just like a, lie a little bit. <laughs> I'm five eight. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, swimsuit or gown? So I love gown. But I feel like my energy comes out better in swimsuit. So I'd have to say swimsuit. Perfect. My kind of girl. I'll be rocking Vizcaya, you know? Yeah, we're on the same page on everything. Photo shoot or fashion show? Oh my gosh, these are so hard. I know. Because I love all of them. I know. Photo shoot. I just feel like the content from a photo shoot is iconic. iconic. It lasts forever. And And you can edit. And you can edit it. (laughs) Just a little face tune never hurt nobody. No, absolutely not. um east coast or west coast east coast i'm an east coast girl through and through that's where i disagree with you i'm a west coast girl Uh, i'm sorry but born and raised in new york hey google stop say born and raised in new york because i'm born and raised in new york i have to be an east coast girl you know that explains it i'm born in colorado is that west coast yeah that's like west technically yeah i would say it's west coast yeah something like that Mm -hmm. road trip or fly fly I fly, I feel like I fly more than a normal human being, and I just love it. I believe it. Yeah. You're busy. You're everywhere. You Says you. You're literally <laughs> everywhere. I don't know how many countries you've been in the past week, but I feel like, like it's a, at least three or four. Yeah, like three or four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, steak or sushi? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you said sushi. <laughs> I love a really good steak. I never mm-hmm. was a steak girl, but I went to STK when I was actually in LA. Mm-hmm. And so shout out to the West Coast a little bit. Yeah. But it was the best steak I've ever had. And when I was in Vietnam, actually, I had some steak too, and it was really good. Mm-hmm. So I'd have to say steak. Yeah. How do you take your steak? Like rare? Medium if it's rare? good. If, if it's, it's good, good, I'll do like a medium rare, rare. But if it's not good, I want it cooked all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> like a sketchy area. Like a hockey puck, please. Oh my God. I used to hate steak and then I started getting medium rare and I'm like, okay, now I like steak. Yeah. I'm a steak girl. Yeah. I just overcooked it. Mm-hmm. Um, so the last one is not a this or that, but it's like a question that I love to like ask my pageant girl. Okay. So what's an ideal onstage question that you'd love to be asked and like how would you answer it? Hmm. That's hard because I feel like on stage question is what I like get the most nervous about. That's normal. Well, I like it to be something about your platform mm-hmm. or something about your background so that I could really talk about myself and my plans as the yeah. next title holder. What is your platform? Like, what would your legacy be as Miss USA? So definitely mental health awareness, mental illness awareness. I think mm-hmm. it's so important that we keep the conversation going. And as somebody who struggled with it and whose family struggled with it, and it used to be a taboo thing when we were younger, I just think it needs to be talked about way more because one in every four people, sorry, one in every five people struggle with mental illness. And out of that amount of people, at least half of the people go undiagnosed. Wow. So it's a lot of people that go undiagnosed and don't have the coping abilities to help them through. And I feel like that's really important. 
Wow. I love that. I'm so excited for your journey. So where can we keep up with you on social media? So as I said, I'm not really on TikTok much. I do have a TikTok. It's okay. They're about to ban it anyways. (laughs) Okay. So on Instagram, you can follow me at official Heather Marie. And yeah, that's basically it. Just in case it sticks around, what's your TikTok? I think it's at official Heather Marie as well, but I'm really not sure. She doesn't even know, so she's not posting Oh my gosh. I'm like, what is it, guys? Wait, let me look it up real quick, oh just to make gosh. sure. But I haven't posted on it in, like, a forever. Oh, you know what's crazy? My little sister, I never stopped talking about this. My little sister that's doing Miss Grand Japan, they're prioritizing TikTok so much. Mm-hmm. It's like a TikTok show. Like, even their social media challenges, the voting, everything's happening on TikTok. So. Grand is very about lives. Yeah. So, actually, my TikTok is at Heather Marie Thompson. Okay. So, that used to be my Instagram, but it got changed. So. The official Heather Marie. Yeah, yeah. Because she's legit now. I like, am legit. And yes. someday my last name might change. So, oh, it's probably so better. Yeah, Brand Heather Marie. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I'm thank so excited. Thank you. It was so much fun. I appreciate you having me and doing this glam. Oh, yeah. You're amazing.